What's up everyone, Dr. Jacob Wilson here, the Muscle PhD, and we're gonna to talk today is how do I prevent fat gain post contest, or even if you're not contest dieting, post diet, okay? So, a couple things to understand this, right? I want you to understand your body and how it works, right? When I diet down, okay, and I'm losing, I'm losing body fat, right? Your body, there's, makes adaptations, okay? A lot of times people have used the term metabolic damage. That's not a good, accurate term, okay? You're, you're not damaged or you wouldn't adapt, right? It's really metabolic adaptation that happens. And basically, as you diet down and you lose a lot of body fat and you get shredded, from a survival standpoint, you gotta think to yourself. Your body's not thinking like, oh, I'm gonna look great on the beach, this is freaking awesome, or, you know, oh, I'm on contest, my most muscular is gonna look great, and you know, I got shredded obliques and shredded abs, and you can see striations in my glutes. Your body's not happy about that, right? Like you are, it's not going, oh, cool, shredded glutes. Nope. Your body's saying like, holy smoke, I just lost all this body fat. I'm like five, 6% body fat now. I don't have much left. The next thing I'm gonna have to do is go to my internal organs. I'm gonna start have to catabolizing tissue and I'm probably gonna die, okay? That's what your body's saying when you're shredded on stage, okay? And um, so, and if you look, there's a study by Chris Foz, and um, this guy's actually enormous. He's a natural pro bodybuilder. But anyway, Chris Foz basically documented what happened during a contest, and what you see is that like body fat goes down, obviously, and then uh, a few, he, he quote, reverse dieted, like long reverse diet or whatever, and basically what you see at first post contest is, you know a lot of guys are like, oh, I'm gonna gain muscle really fast, it's gonna be awesome. Actually, the first thing he regained was fat. And once his fat came back, then his muscle mass started to come back, okay? So what's going on, right? Well, I want you to think about this for a second. If you come out of a contest, I just told you, your body's thinking, oh, I'm, it's not thinking I'm shredded, it's thinking like, I'm going to die. So why strategically, first off, metabolically speaking, if I add muscle tissue, what's that gonna do to your metabolism? It's going to raise it. So why after dieting for six months, will my body think, hey, I got a real good idea, let me raise a metabolically active tissue? For survival, it's a terrible thing to do. So if you look at the study by Foz, basically you saw that the first thing that came back up was fat. Why, because it's not a highly metabolically active tissue and you store a bunch of calories in it. It only makes sense, right? Okay, muscles metabolically active, I don't want to add it, okay? So your body is in a fat storing uh, capacity where it's gonna store that fat very fast, okay? And it's also, not looking to gain muscle because it's metabolically active. So wh wh what's going on? How do I prevent this? Well, one of the ways guys think they prevent it is this. They're like, you know what? I'm gonna do a really long reverse diet. That's my idea, okay? So I'm going to slowly raise my calories back up for the next six months, okay? Now, what do you see? When, you, when they look in the mirror, slowly, they're, they're not gaining fat as back as fast, you're right, okay? So say that, for example, in the off season, they're at 3,500 calories, then contest time, they're like at 18, or say they get down to 1,500 calories, I've seen this a lot, from 3,500 to 1,500 calories. So like, here, I got an idea. I'm gonna add like 10 calories a day, or I'm gonna add 50 calories a week, okay? So now, instead of 1,500, they're at 1,550, and then they're at 1,600 the next week, and then 1,650 but their maintenance calories actually aren't, are probably like 2,500 calories. So what, there's research from a scientist named McLean, and he actually published a large good review paper in 2011-ish, where basically McLean showed, okay, that what happens is this. Here's maintenance calories. So here's your off-season, okay? Your off-season uh, uh, maintenance might have been higher, okay? But here's your new maintenance calories after you dieted, all right? Once you go below maintenance, immediately when you are below maintenance calories, you are making more metabolic adaptations. What does that mean? Your metabolism getting slower and you're more prone to store fat. So if after your contest, your new maintenance calories is 2,500 
and you're now reverse dieting, you're at 1550 and then 1600 and then 1650, until you're actually at maintenance, you're making metabolic adaptations. That means reverse dieting is making you adapt worse than if you had just gone up to maintenance calories, okay? So you are actually, the probability of you gaining more fat and being more wrecked metabolically uh, uh, from an adaptation standpoint are higher if you do a slow uh, um, um, uh, reverse diet over three months time. You are actually screwing yourself over, okay? So how do I prevent this, okay? The first thing that you need to do is get up to your new maintenance calories, okay? How do you calculate that? One of the ways I typically calculate that is this, okay? Look at your dieting calories, look at your calories that you had in the off season that were maintenance, say that was 3,500, and go between them, okay? So that's probably gonna be, you know, uh, you know maybe 2,500, maybe 2,700 calories. You go straight up to maintenance, okay? Now, are you gonna be shredded like you were in your contest when you go to maintenance? No, you're gonna gain a little bit of fat but you're gonna stop those adaptations from happening, okay? So that's the first thing is jump to maintenance, and I suggest going somewhere between off-season and contest shape, okay? Now, that's the first thing is get back up to there immediately, all right? The next thing that you can do to avoid fat gain is basically um, uh, not binge when you come out of your contest. So we actually did a study, this is actually a ketogenic study, like how much fat can you really gain after a contest? You hear guys going like, oh, I was 175 shredded and a week, you know, two weeks after my contest, I was 225. And scientists, I've heard scientists go, that's impossible, that can't happen, that violates all the laws of thermodynamics. Well, I call bullshit. What I'm telling you right now, it didn't violate anything. If you're a bodybuilder and you've been dieting for six months, you will hold water like crazy and you will gain fat like a mother. I'm telling you that right now. We did a study on ketogenic dieting where they basically dieted down for almost 10 weeks. We put them on carbs and within a week, they had gained several pounds of fat, okay? Like legitimately. And a lot of scientists are like, that can't happen. That's, that violates the laws of thermodynamics. Well, I'm telling you right now, it happened. We measured it, and we measured it over and over again, and it absolutely happened. And I'm telling you right now, you come out of contest, you will store fat at an extreme accelerated rate. So if you go, oh, I'm just gonna go off my diet for two weeks and binge for two weeks, yeah, you'll probably gain minimum of 10 pounds of fat in that two weeks time, maybe 15. And guess what? That weight gain that you gain, if it was 10, 15, 20 pounds, I guarantee you 95% of it is fat, because your body's trying to store at that time. So I'm. Um, Fine, have a cheat meal post contest, but don't have a cheat month because you will gain fat at an accelerated rate. But what you should do is not do the extreme reverse diet and just go right back up to maintenance. That's number one, okay? Um, okay, so part two of how do I not gain fat post contest really focuses on what, how should my macronutrients look, okay? So remember in part one of how to not gain fat coming out of a contest or dieting was what should we do? We said one, don't do long reverse dieting. We said get back up to maintenance calories right away, okay? Part two is gonna talk about the macronutrient composition, okay? Technically, when you're starting to put weight back on, you're in essence in an overfeeding state, right? Um, so what you wanna do is have macronutrients that are hard to store as fat. Now, Dr. Jose Antonio did research where basically he found that when you overfeed on protein, it's very difficult to convert protein to fat. It takes a lot of energy, okay, to do so. And also protein's anabolic. So my suggestion is this, okay, and this is a very interesting trick I'm gonna give you right now, okay? Remember I said in the last episode, okay, or the last question, if you're off season, you're at like 3,000 calories, and now during your contest you got down to 1,500, go somewhere in between, okay? That could be 2,250 calories. It could be 2,500, something like that, okay? You immediately go to, your, to those calories. To avoid fat, what I would recommend is that entire calorie increase come from protein to start. So for your first month, you were overfeeding on protein. So you went from 1,500 calories to 2,500 calories, up that purely through protein to start for the first month, okay? And I'm telling you, you're gonna, you might not gain fat at all or your fat's gonna be very little. 
So basically you're gonna be eating steak, chicken, shrimp, you know, eggs, stuff like that, okay? That's one strategy I recommend. And again, basically, Jose Antonio's work showed that when you eat a bunch of protein, it's almost, it's very difficult to gain fat. Why? Protein's metabolically active. It stimulates thermogenesis, which means it makes you very hot. You burn calories off. Two, protein has to get converted to, to basically has to get converted to carbohydrates, which takes a lot of energy. And then that has to get converted to uh, fat that's very difficult to occur. So it's hard to gain fat when overfeeding on protein, okay? Another approach that conceivably could work is when you cycle, when you've come out of a contest, raise your calories on a ketogenic diet, right? So basically, think about it. When you're coming out of a contest, you're preferentially storing fat. What if you shifted your fuel utilization to preferentially burning fat? That's a ketogenic diet, right? So what you could do is come out of a contest and switch to a keto diet, and, and I would say more of a modified Atkins diet. So that's where your basically your fat's gonna be anywhere from 55 to 60% fat, and you're gonna have much higher protein, right? So you might end up having 40% protein and only 5% carbohydrate, okay? But again, hard to store protein, and two, you shifted your, your utilization to fat as its primary source of fuel, okay? And then after doing that for a month, maybe you're gonna basically for a, another month do, you know, 70% uh, fat, 30% protein, 30, 35% protein, 5% carbohydrate, okay? So again, what is the goal here? You're preferentially storing fat. Now by, by raising your calories in a low ca uh, carbohydrate fashion, you're making your fat its, your, its primary source of fuel, okay? So let's recap this. Coming out of a contest, remember, you're gonna store fat as, as, as your primary source of fuel, okay? You want to avoid this. You can do this by A, jumping up to maintenance calories, two, those calories coming up from protein, or switching to a ketogenic diet, okay? The last thing I would say is that um, make sure that basically that you, with your training, I would recommend not at first not doing as heavy a training, because centrally you're gonna be really taxed, to do a lot of metabolic training, you know what I mean? Like supersets, giant sets, not too taxing, and keep interval training in there so it keeps you lean. Um, and once you start stop gaining fat, I would recommend that you taper, meaning like back your volume off, probably by about 60-75% because you're no longer in a fat storage phase. Now you need to allow your body to recover, so taper back. Cut your volume down by probably 60%, 75%, for anywhere from seven to 14 days. And then after that, it's time to gain muscle again, fellas. Uh, thank you so much for watching this. I appreciate, I will see you next time.